You wanted it, you're getting it. Today we're going to build a Python script that counts our bicep curl wraps using machine learning. Okay, now I can stop flexing. What is going on guys, welcome back. As already mentioned, today we're going to build a Python script that uses machine learning to count the bicep wrap curls that we're going to do with a dumbbell. So I'm going to take this here and we're going to make some exercises and the Python script is going to count for us how many reps we already did. So let us get right into it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up CMD or the terminal of your choice depending on your operating system and we're going to install three modules. We're going to type pip install pillow, we're going to install opencv-python and we're going to install sklearn or scikit-learn. So the machine learning is going to happen with traditional machine learning, we're not going to use neural networks. Uh, this will be enough. And those are the three modules that you're going to need for today. Now, we're going to split this program into four files. We're going to have an app file with the GUI. We're going to have a main file for running it. We're going to have a camera file for the camera processing. And we're going to have a model file for the machine learning model. And we're going to start out with the camera file. It's quite simple. It doesn't have too much code. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to import import cv2 as cv i just like to use this alias here uh, and we're going to create a class called camera like that uh, it's not going to extend from anything it's going to have an init function and or init method and we're going to create a camera object in here by saying camera equals cv2 uh, dot video or actually we used the alias so cv uh, video capture actually let's let's not use the alias because it's just going to be confusing cv2 video capture now if you have just one camera you type zero if you have multiple cameras for example i have the camera that i'm recording with and i have the camera which is uh built into my laptop if i want to use this camera i have to type one if i want to use the other camera the first camera so to say i have to type zero now i'm going to use zero because i'm going to show you that this works with my laptop camera uh, oh, I deleted the whole import statement, by the way. So import CV2 just without the alias. Um, this is going to use my primary camera now. If you have five cameras, of course, just uh, try the different numbers and you're going to find the camera that you're looking for. So we're going to now say if not self camera is open. So if there is no camera for some reason, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to raise an exception. We're going to say value error or actually is this. Yeah, let's go camera not found. Um, and what we're going to do then is we're going to define a get frame function. The get frame function is not special. It's just going to give us the picture, uh, the image that we're seeing right now. And for this, we're going to, uh, or actually, first of all, I need to add some more stuff to the init function. We just say self dot width is going to be self dot camera get, and we're going to get the frame width and the frame height from the camera itself. So CV2 dot cap prop frame width. This is the one that we're looking for. We're going to copy that. We're going to do the same thing for the height. Um, but instead of width, obviously, we're going to go with height. I hope it has the same name. It does. Um, and that's it for the init function. Now the get frame function, what we're going to do here is we're going to say if the camera is opened, uh, get up copilot already knows what we want to do. If the camera is open, then we're going to say return value and the frame is going to be self camera dot read and we want to check is there a return value was there a return value. So if red, then we're going to just return the return value and we're going to convert the color convert color uh, of the frame from BGR to RBG. Why do we do that? Because by default, open uh, CV has this BGR color scheme. So blue, green, red. And usually we use RGB, which is red, green, blue. So if you have BGR and you try to display RGB, blue and red are going to be swapped and you don't want to have that. Uh, at least I don't. So what do we have here? An additional bracket. Now, do we actually need to, we don't need the parentheses here, right? Yeah, we can do it like that. And then we can say otherwise, we're just going to return none. So red and none. And if the camera is not opened, we're going to return none. Like that. Uh, now, one more thing that we need to add here is the delete function. So we're going to say def 
underscore delete, which is uh, dunder. So we have these dump double unders. I have a video about that. Um, all we're going to do here is we're going to say camera release, but we're going to do this only if the camera is open. So only if self dot camera is opened, uh, are we going to release it? And that's it for the camera file. So next, let us continue with the graphical user interface. For that, we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it app.py. And we're going to have to import a couple of things here. Now, the graphical user interface is going to be based on TK Inter, so we don't need to install anything. This is part of the core Python module, but we're going to have to import a couple of things. And we're going to import TK Inter as TK. We're going to import OS. We're going to import pill.image, which is pillow that we already installed pill.image tk. We're going to import cv2. Uh, we're going to import camera. Um, and later on, we're also going to import the model that we don't have yet. Now, for the graphical user interface, we're going to use a class. Why are we going to use a class? Because when it comes to graphical user interfaces, oftentimes we have UI elements that want to access functions. By the way, this is GitHub Copilot making suggestions. Um, we have UI elements that want to access some functions, functions that want to access UI elements. And if you don't have one object uh, where you can reference the individual parts, it's going to be uh, yeah, tedious. So class app and the init function is going to be basically constructing some base variables. And uh, I think we're going to outsource the graphical user interface generation uh, into a separate function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say self window equals TK TK. So this is going to create the window. Uh, then we're going to set a title. The window title is going to be um, neural nine bicep wrap counter. Is it bicep or biceps? Let's let's go with an S here. Sounds sounds more correct. Um, now we're going to have the counters. Now the counters are not the counters for um, they're not the counters for the actual reps. The counters are going to be the counters for the sample images. Because what we're going to do is we're going to train the model on pictures of the extended arm and of the contracted arm. And depending on how many pictures we have, we need to count so we know what the uh, the amount is of images that we have. So by default, we're going to say one one because we're going to start at one. Now this doesn't mean that we already have a picture. It does it does mean that the next picture is going to get the number one for the particular class. Uh, so of course this equals one one. Then we're going to have the actual rep counter. This is what we're going to be interested in the end. This is what we're going to display to the final user. And um, then we're going to set self dot extended to false and set self dot contracted is also going to be false. So this is important because in order to count you know, we can classify images of extended arms and of extended uh, on of contracted arms. What we need to do in order to count the reps is we need to find the transition, we need to say, okay, now it is extended in the next second, it's contracted, this means a rep happened. So this is how we're going to do this. Basically, maybe there are better ways to do this as well. And we're going to say self dot last prediction is going to be zero. By doing that, we can also see, okay, what was the last state because we don't want to count up when it's contracted or extended, but when it changed the state. Um, yeah. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to also have some basic variables like counting enabled because we don't want the graphical user interface to always be counting, maybe you want to pause it, we don't want to uh, we don't want it to count right now, we want to press start and then it starts counting, we want to be able to reset and so on. So we're going to have counting enabled to false by default. And then we're going to create a camera object, the camera is going to be a new camera here. And why doesn't this work? Oh, because it has to refer to the file camera dot camera, we're important camera here. Otherwise, I think we could do something like from camera, import camera as well, this should work but let's go with the default. And um, besides that, we're going to have a function for the initialization of the graphical user interface, we're going to have a delay that we provide for the GUI. Uh, we're going to update the graphical user interface after afterwards. And then we're going to start the main loop. So first of all, we're going to say self dot window dot 
uh, attributes and we're going to have this start at the top most which I think means that it starts uh, on top if I remember that correctly and then we're going to say self window main loop like that uh, that's it for the actual for the actual constructor now here we have two functions that we don't have yet so we need to define them we're going to have init GUI which is the next thing that we're going to do and we're going to have update but we're not going to implement update yet so for the graphical user interface we're going to have a lot of buttons now the first thing we want to have the graphical user interface should have uh, a part where I can see the camera so a canvas where I can see uh, the picture of me from the camera being displayed in the canvas and uh, besides that, I want to have a bunch of buttons that allow me to add new examples for contracted and extended arms, uh, for resetting the score, for training the model and all that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say self.canvas. And this is going to be a TK canvas self.window. Uh, the width is going to be dependent on the camera. So camera width, and I think we need to say self camera, right? Uh, and the camera height, height equals self dot camera dot height. There you go. And I think besides that, there's not much to configure. Then self pack, self canvas pack, just to add it there. And afterwards, we're going to have a bunch of buttons. That's basically what we're going to do here. So the graphical user interface is quite repetitive. We're going to say toggle, uh, or actually let's call it button underscore toggle auto. This is basically the toggle uh, for the counting to allow auto counting or to, to stop it basically. Maybe we should call this toggle counting, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. This is going to be a TK button and it's going to be part of self window. It's going to have a certain text, but it's not going to be toggle auto. It's going to be uh, toggle counting. And the command for that is going to be a function, which we're going to call counting toggle. And this function, of course, needs to be defined as well. So counting toggle, it's going to be an empty function for now. Um, yeah, so afterwards, of course, we're going to add the button as well. So button toggle auto, we're just going to pack this. Now, in order to have the button look a little bit more, you know, large in order to expand it, we're going to just pass here that it's going to be anchored. And it's going to be anchored to TK center, center. But we're going to expand. So we're going to say expand equals true. There you go. So this is just design stuff. You can design this however you want. Now we're going to copy that and we're going to create a bunch more buttons here. Uh, the next one is going to be for button class one. Now this basically means class for the contracted images or for the extended images. Again, we need to provide samples of extracted arms or contracted arms. And you want to have them look as similar as possible. The only difference being that one arm is extended, one contracted. So you don't want to shoot these images on one day and then the second category on another day. Uh, you want them to look quite similar because then based on those images, it's going to classify your training set, basically. Uh, so training set in this case, not meaning machine learning, but your curls. Um, so button class one is going to add the current image that the camera is seeing to the training set for the model. And for this, we're going to uh, basically call this extended. This is going to be our class one. And this is basically just going to call a function that we don't have yet, we're going to call a lambda, a lambda expression, self dot safe for class is going to be the function and we're going to pass one here, because the extended is going to be the first class, uh, lambda with D. Uh, we don't have that function yet. So we're going to go down here, def safe for class. Um, oh, by the way, we forgot the self here. And here we're going to have what did I call it because class Yeah, I call it class number here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pass. And this basically means that when we press that button, the current image is going to be, uh, we're going to take a snapshot and we're going to put that into a directory, this directory is going to contain all the examples of extended arms. And 
basically the same thing is going to happen for contracted. And then when we train the model, it's going to get these images, train itself, and then uh, it's going to make classifications for new images. So this function adds the current image to this particular class. Uh, do we need something else? I don't think so. Now, of course, we can also say the width of the button is 50 just to have it a bit larger. Uh, maybe we should do that here as well. Width is going to be 50. And then basically all we need to do is we need to change this to class one. Now I'm going to copy that for class two as well. So we're going to change this year to two, this year to two as well, this year to contract it. Let me just see if I'm not blocking anything. I'm not very good. Um, and here we're going to change this one to two. All right, so that's it for those buttons. Now the next button is going to be the train button. This button is going to train the model. So we're going to say, actually, let's copy this again. We're going to call this train, or actually we have the convention btn underscore train, btn underscore train. We're going to call it train model. It's going to have the same design. And we're going to call a different function, though we're going to call the function that we don't have yet. Uh, now, inside of the model class that we don't have yet, we're going to pass these counters. Uh, where are they? These counters here. So we want to know um, how many images I have for class one, how many images I have for class two. These counters are important when training the model because the model needs to know how many pictures to look for. So we're going to also have to pass this as a parameter because of that, we're going to use a lambda expression. The function is going to be self dot uh, model that we don't have yet. Uh, and we're going to say self model train model, and we're going to pass the counters that we have here. So in order to not trigger something here, I'm just going to say self dot model equals uh, none for now. I think this is still going to cause some issues, right? Because uh, it doesn't even rec recognize that none has no uh, train model function. However, we pass the counters here as well. And this then trains the model. And last but not least for the buttons, what we're going to do is we're going to say, we want to have a reset button. And this reset button is going to reset the counter reset. Uh, actually, btn reset, you want to keep everything consistent here. btn reset. And here we're just going to say, reset and the function is going to be self dot reset. We don't have it. I know. So self dot reset. And of course, we need to implement that function. And we have no it should work. What's the problem here? Uh, self. Why doesn't it work? TK button. Is that the problem? Yeah. So let's add the class here def reset pass. Now we need to implement these four functions. And then we can also go to the model or maybe we have to jump uh, between the models. And actually, we need to add a label as well the counter itself. So self dot uh, counter label is going to be TK dot label and we're going to pass self dot window as the parent. The text is going to be uh, not what GitHub Copilot suggests. I think the text in the beginning is going to be zero, but we have a rep counter. So we're going to say text equals F string rep or actually self dot rep counter like that. Um, and we're going to set a config so uh, or a font in the config so counter label dot config. And we're going to set not this font here, but we're going to go with Arial and we're going to go with 24 not with 44. And last but not least, we're going to say counter label dot pack with the same stuff. There you go. So that's it for that function. Now the counting toggle function is going to be quite simple. All we need to do is we need to say self dot counting enabled. 
is going to be not self.counting enabled. So it's going to be the opposite. If it's true, it's going to result in false. If it's false, it's going to result in true. Um, now, which of the functions are also easy to implement? Now, reset is quite easy. Self.repCounter is going to be zero. That's all it does. Now, the update function is actually what's going to be more difficult because it's going to need to already predict stuff. So we're going to for now skip it because it's going to be based on a function called predict. We don't have that function yet. Now I can also edit here def predict. This is going to cause the model to predict the current image. This function is going to be based on that. And uh, because of that, I'm not going to implement it for now. But this is a function that we can definitely implement uh, the save for class function. This basically, as I said, takes the image that we already have and saves it as a training example. So what we do here is we say return and frame is going to be camera or actually self dot camera dot get frame. So from the class that we already wrote here, remember what get frame does is it takes the current frame, it um, converts the color scheme and it returns it here. And then what we do with that is we say if not OS dot path exists, and then we type one. This basically means if there is no directory with the name one, we're going to create one. So we're going to say OS dot MK dir for make directory, we're going to make a directory with the name one. And um, if not OS path exists, two, we're also going to create this directory. Because those are the directories that we're going to save our examples in. And the class number is then basically going to just translate into the directory that we want to put this um, particular picture in. And that's basically it. So now we're going to say cv2 dot imwrite and we want to write this image into the respective uh, file path. So we want to say this is going to be now an f string that's a little bit more complicated. So I need to uh, look a couple of times to my second screen. So we have the class number, which is the directory. And then inside of that, we want to have uh, the image with the name frame. So frame is going to be uh, the general pattern here frame dot jpeg, but we want to have numbers. So in between here, we want to have which frame is it the first one, the second one, the third one, and so on. And for that, basically, what we do is we say self dot counters. And uh, we say class num minus one. Why do we say class num minus one? Because arrays or lists start with an index zero, and we pass one or two. So actually, if we pass one, we want to go to counter zero, if we pass two, we want to one, uh, we want to go to counters one. So to the second position. Uh, we write that and what we actually write there, this is just the path what we write there is the cv2 dot convert color. Um, and we're going to convert the color of the frame to grayscale. So we're going to say cv2 color RGB to oh, I forgot an underscore here, RGB to gray. Was it gray or grayscale it was just gray. Okay. Because actually the colors are not as important, right? In order to predict if an arm is contracted or extended, you know, light is important, but we have different levels of light or brightness. We don't really need the colors. So it's simpler for the model to just pass grayscale here. Um, then what we're going to do is, uh, and this is maybe not the best way to do this. I already explained this in my camera classifier tutorial. Maybe there's a better way to do this. But what we're going to do now is we're going to open that image using pillow. So pill dot open, uh, or actually, sorry, pill dot image dot open, we're going to open that image that we just saved right now. So basically, we can copy this here. We're going to open that. Um, and then we're going to resize this, we're going to say image dot, dot thumbnail, thumbnail like that. Uh, and we pass 150, 150, because we want to have one size of images and we want to have a small size so that our model doesn't have too much to look at. And this size is definitely enough to recognize the difference between this and that. So it's, it's, yeah, certainly enough. And we're going to pass as a parameter as a flag here, pill dot image dot anti alias for anti aliasing. 
And once this is done, we're going to save it again. So basically we're saving it with OpenCV, we're loading it with pillow, resizing it and saving it with pillow again. Again, this is not necessarily the best way to do it, uh, but I remember back then that I tried uh, different ways and I failed. So maybe if I sit down for another hour, I will find a solution. So what one I have here is want to save it actually isn't this the same path It is the same path. So let's copy this and replace this. There you go. And yeah, that's basically that. And of course, don't forget, we want to increase the counter. So self counter class num minus one is going to be plus equal uh, to one. What is that counters? I think there you go. So this is the save for class function. So let us proceed to the actual machine learning part. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it mal.py. Here we need to import CV2 as well. We need to import pill. We need to import um, numpy. Oh, by the way, we didn't install numpy. So open up your command line again and type pip install numpy if you don't have it. And then we're going to install, uh, we're going to import from sklearn.svm, so from support vector machines, we're going to import the linear support vector classifier. Now, what we're doing here, the counting of the reps is a classification problem because we have the two classes extended and contracted, and then we're going to uh, want to classify the current image if it's one class or the other, and then we're going to base our counting on that prediction. So what we need to do is we need to have a model, an AI model that predicts the classes. So that does the classification for us. In this case, a linear support vector machine is enough. We don't need a convolutional neural network. Uh, it works fine with a linear SVC as well. So we're going to create a class model and the constructor is going to be quite simple. We're going to have the init function and it's just going to say self model equals linear SVC. Uh, that's about that. And then we also have the train model function. And here we're going to pass the counters, remember. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the two lists that we're then going to feed into the model. So we're going to fit them all on these two lists. And those are going to be the image list, which is going to be an empty numpy array, and the classes list or the class list. The idea is that we have an image at a certain position and a respective class at the other position. So those are the X and Y values for the machine learning model in the end. And what we do now is we say for I in range and here we say one and counters zero. So basically, we're going to iterate through all the images that we have for class one. And what are we going to do with those? We're going to load them into the program. So CV2 dot read um im read and what we want to have here is an f string one slash frame i dot jpeg and what one halves want to have just one channel so everything from that dimension everything from that dimension and just the first channel here then what we're going to do is we're going to say image equals image reshape and we're going to reshape the whole thing into the shape 16,950. And afterwards, we're going to add this to the image list. So image list is going to uh, be NP append, and we're going to append to the image list, the image in a list. Now this is important for the format SK learn wants it like that. Uh, so just do it like this, put some square brackets around the image. And we also want to add the class to the list. So class equals NP append class list and one and a half one here. Now we can copy that and we can do the same thing for counters one. So for class two. Um, and here we also want to have a two and that's basically that. Now, in the end, what we do is we say image list equals image list dot reshape, we need to reshape this and we want to reshape it to counters counters zero minus one plus counters one minus one. And then we want to have this uh, same shape that we have here. Basically, this means that we have uh, the amount of images and the size of the individual arrays there. 
All right, and then what we do is we say self dot model dot fit, we fit the model now on the image list and on the class list. And then we can print to the user model successfully trained like that. So once the model is trained, we can do predictions, we can make predictions. And for that, we're going to write a second function, the predict function here. And what this function is going to do, we're going to pass a frame to it, by the way. So the idea of that predict function is that the predict function in the app calls that predict function. So this function calls this function and passes a frame from the camera because here we don't have access to the camera. So we get a frame here. And what we get out of that frame is uh, just the element at index one. And what we do then is we say CV2 im write, we write that image onto onto the disk by saying just frame JPEG, we don't need to have any fancy convention here, because this is just going to be a temp file that we use for the classification. Now, this is again, the same process, we use this here to convert from um, from frame CV2 color RGB to gray, so color RGB to gray. And then we do again the same thing that is probably not the most optimal thing we load the image again with a pillow so pill image open frame jpeg and then we resize that so we say image dot thumbnail 150 times 150 and then pillow dot image dot anti alias. Now, by the way, if uh, if you're asking why exactly this number, I think the reason for that is I'm not sure I think I had the issue uh, once in the past that, of course, if you have something like 150 times 150, you would end up with more pixels uh, with more data than you have here. The problem is I think that the actual resolution of the images is not 150 times 150, because it keeps the ratios. And as you can see here, I mean, I think for the recording, I actually made it uh, one on one, but actually, the camera has more width than height, naturally. So because of that, when you resize that you're going to end up with a different uh, with a different ratio. And because of that, it's not going to take all these pixels, it's going to resize it in a different way. I think that's the reason. Uh, the main reason we're doing this in the first place is to just uh, flatten this, you could say, or put this into one number instead of having two dimensions. Um, all right, so once we have that, what we do is we save the image. So image save to frame dot JPEG. So this is the format that we now want to have for our model. And then again, what we do is we say CV2 dot imread, we read this image again, like that. And what we do now is we say we reshape it. So image dot reshape again, same dimension. And then what we do is we say, prediction is going to be self model predict and a list with an image in it. And this is what we return prediction. And we only want to return the index zero, which is going to be the actual class. So that's that let's go and now change the stuff in the app py. So let us go ahead and actually import the model script here. Model like that. And let's change this here to model dot model. And then we're going to go to the predict function, we're going to say frame equals the current camera frame. So we're going to get the current frame and we're going to make a prediction. So we're going to say prediction equals self model predict the frame. And then we're going to check if something changed. So if the prediction that we have right now, is not the same as the last prediction that we had, something changed, and we're going to set the individual booleans to true here. And in the update function, we're then going to count. So we're going to say if the prediction is one currently, um, and it's different than the last prediction, then we're going to set this to true, we're going to say self extended equals true. And we're going to say self dot last prediction equals one. 
if the prediction is two, we're going to say self dot contracted equals true and self dot last prediction equals two. Now we're not going to set the other one to false, respectively, we're going to do all of this in the update function. So that's all for the predict function, it's going to set the value so that the update function knows when to count up. And here we're going to basically say, okay, if counting is enabled, what we're going to do is we're going to say self predict all the time. And so every time we call update, it's going to call self predict. And then we're going to say, uh, if self dot extended, and self dot contracted, we're going to set both of them to false. Now, what's the logic behind that the logic is quite simple. Um, this triggers when it's not the same. So when change happens, when change happens, both need to be set to true. So change happens. And both motions have to be or one motion has to be done to reach both states. And once this happens, we're going to reset all this and we're going to count up. So we're going to say self dot rep counter plus equals one. And what we're going to do then is, of course, we're going to set the label. So we're going to set self dot counter label config, not the font. It's going to be a text this time. And this is just going to be self dot rep counter. There you go. Then we're going to say ret and frame is going to be camera get frame. And if there is a return, uh, if there's a return value here, we're going to update the content of the canvas as well. So actually, do we need to delete here? I'm not sure about that. We're going to just say self dot photo. And this is going to be pill image TK. Okay, get up copilot already knows what I want to do. Uh, I want to say image TK photo image pill image from array frame. That's all we need to do. So we get from this frame the image and we say self dot canvas dot create image. And we're going to set self dot photo as the image here, we want to set zero zero here first, then the image is going to be self photo, and we're going to anchor it to northwest. So upper left. Uh, or actually, TK, and W like that. And then self dot window after self dot delay. Um, or was it like that's uh, self window dot after self delay after a delay, what we're going to do is we're going to call the update function again. So see what happens here, what happens is we call the update function once when we construct this thing. And then it calls itself all the time after a certain delay. This influences the FPS, obviously. Um, but this is how this function runs all the time updating the stuff checking the stuff. So I think we're actually done. I'm not sure if we have any mistakes. Now all we need to do now is we need to combine this in a main file, which is like five lines of code. So we're going to call this main.py. we're going to import the app. And we're going to say def main, or actually, yeah, def main. And we're going to say app dot app like that. And then if name is main, then main. So let's just see if we have video capture zero, we should have that. Now we can run this. And we can see if it works. It's going to take a while probably because the camera needs to load and all that. But once it's it's loaded, it should work flawlessly without lags. There you go. So now it says that my camera is blocked. There you go. So now we have this camera as well. Now, maybe want to put this up a little bit. And this means that we can actually go and try to already do something. Now, first of all, let's see if I can make some examples of some images if the whole thing works without crashing. If I can train the model on this, and if I can toggle counting, I don't know, this is probably going to count something to reset it. Okay, this works. So now we can go and uh, move on to the actual demonstration.
All right, so I think we can start now. Now I need my left hand here to click the buttons. I'm going to use the right hand for the actual exercise. Now this should be extended. I'm going to click the button a couple of times. Just spam it a bit, right? You can also add some variations like that. And this should be contracted. So this should be a clear difference because I have a black dumbbell in my hand. Should definitely recognize the difference there. And now I can press train model. And it says model successfully trained back there. And if I now toggle counting. <laughs> There you go. So that's how you do that in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.